Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. We have Star Citizen now for 3.19 on the Wave 1 PTU. We've got a mini patch for that as well that's just been released. Some updates and dev responses on the new tractor beam attach and detach feature have been made, so we'll talk about that. There are new backpacks for RSI subs and a schedule of what else is coming this week with roadmap updates and monthly reports too. Let's jump into this week in Star Citizen. Clan Imperium say, in the world of Alpha 3.18.2, the team has been tirelessly gathering data and rapidly implementing hotfixes, often several times a day, to tackle the interaction delay issue. We are pleased to report that we've identified the root cause and are already working on some fixes to improve the experience. Your efforts in playing and reporting have greatly accelerated our time to fix, and we are truly grateful for your recent activity. Though the journey has been bumpy, we have made significant progress. However, we recognize that there is still much work to be done, and we will remain vigilant in monitoring, adjusting, and implementing further fixes as needed. Thank you. In case you missed it over the weekend, Alpha 3.19 is now available to Wave 1 testing on the PTU group. Salvage contracts, new encounters at Ghost Hollow, and more are available to test as we lead up to Invictus launch week, otherwise known as Fleet Week. Clan and Pyram are also very active on the Bar Citizen World Tour at the moment, and they're going to be at the Beacon or Beatcon event on the 20th of May. So, what's happening throughout the week? Well, Wednesday, we've got the latest roadmap update. So, I'm hoping to see a little bit on 3.20, but it's likely to be some sort of confirmation of features 3.19. We are going to have the monthly reports with information of what Clan and Perium have been working on over the last few weeks and what they're working on now, both for the Star Citizen Persistent Universe and Squadron 42. Now, obviously, they're likely to be 3.19 and Fleet Week centric, but there's going to be a bit on Pyro 4.0, 3.20, all that sort of jazz as well. Thursday, Inside Star Citizen, we have an episode of that. We do not know what's going to be in it yet. Um, it, Clan and Perium say they explore more aspects of continuing development than you can shake a stick at, which is probably likely that it's going to be a sprint report episode because that's lots of little bits. Um, and if they already knew the sort of all the subject matter for the video, then they would have just said it. But I suppose wait and see for that. Friday, we've got Star Citizen Live. That's going to be at 3 p.m. UTC. Again, we don't know exactly what's going to be on that. Now, we have had an updated 3.19 PTU patch. Just a little patch. A lot of fixes here, though, which is absolutely great because they are fixing some of the big known issues. So updates-wise for 3.19, uh, they have uh, updated the UIs at Cassaba Dumps Depot um, with the new building block stuff. Uh, Lawville, level of detail and collisions have had a polish pass. They've added the default port unlock key to right, alt, and K. So basically, that means... If you unlock that, you can have your weapons and components detached with the tractor beam without being in the soft death state. Um, they've removed the old hint system and added the newly revamped dynamic hints UI, which goes um, part of the way towards the new player experience as well, I suppose. Uh, they fixed a load of bugs in this patch and some major ones. Um, so bug fixes. Players in a given instance could experience a response latency of up to dozens of seconds for interactions. Getting that solved is Awesome. When players streamed out of an area and an owned vehicle unstreamed as well, the vehicle didn't stream back in and is shown on the ASOP status as destroyed. Um, most of the landing pads on the Lovell skyscrapers were missing collisions. Enemy combat AI were slow to respond or react. And we know that AI and NPCs are constantly um, sort of in the firing lines when it comes to working, not working, dumb over super, um, super murderers. So just bear that in mind. Um, hopefully they're in a relatively good state for when this patch goes live. Uh, players could be injured or killed when getting out of the chair at the Area 18 Habs. Uh, buying the pharmacy items at Empire Health resulted in invalid location errors. Um, redeemers were missing the collisions on their floors. Uh, the hull A had a uh, a collision wall blocking the player from removing internal components with the tractor beam. Shopping kiosks had misaligned um, sort of or offset interaction spaces and obviously had your sort of view following them for ages. Uh, detached components would cost one Alpha UBC to repair on the ship that had them detached from. So you could remove them and then go, I'm going to repair my ship for one Alpha UBC and then remove them and then sell them all. So you allowed you to basically have this like duplication bug almost um, and you could sell non-stock components with that as well. Uh, it was difficult 
or impossible to remove internal components of the Vulture due to geometry issues, which uh, have now been solved, it looks like. AI Cutlass Splacks would infinitely spawn at Ghost Hollow, which would make for quite a, a difficult fight. Arena Commander Find Match Button was greyed out until player switches game modes, and they fixed a client crash and three additional server crashes. It's great to see them getting through a load of those major issues. And we do know that Clan and Pyramid are obviously working on various other problems that 3.18.2 had and trying to get that in the best state as possible for 3.19, which is effectively a 3.18.3 or 3.18.5 patch, whenever you want to see it, because it's built on the same code base without branching off in the same way that other patches would branch off, um, if you see what I mean. Now, we did have some more information about the tractor beam item um, attaching and detaching. Um, Clan and Pyramid are gathering feedback for this and I've also answered some questions or been talking about some of the feedback they've received. So uh, let me read you the post. Tractor beam, item, attaching and detaching, Alpha 3.19 PTU feedback. We have released a new update to tractor beam functionality that will allow you to detach ship components, including weapons, internal components, power plants, coolers, etc., where applicable to and from ships, and mining laser heads. You can then place those components on your own ship in compatible hardpoints and or place those components within the cargo hold for sale to shops that carry those items. This significantly expands the kind of and style of available salvage from disabled ships. In addition, this can be done on intact ships, though the ability to detach is linked to the port lock unlock functionality, so people just can't randomly loot your ship. So they are especially interested in feedback on core functionality, such as interaction issues, removing and placing weapons, exploits and loopholes that allow easy sales. Obviously, we've seen some of those fixed already. Uh, balance of component salvage to hull scrapping salvage, because they don't want to make it sort of pointless to do other types of salvage as well. They want you both to hull scrape. They want that to make a lot of money as a, as a role, but obviously you can now both strip weapons and components and hull scrape if you had a vulture. And um, is it worth doing sort of all of it? Uh, how are these changes interacting with insurance claims um, as well? So there were some questions and answers from CIG's Savrals. Um, so let me go through these. Uh, destroying or soft death of a target should unlock item ports by default, just like doors and elevators are. This would also make work on Reliant Salvage claims easier by default, as you no longer need to enter the cockpit, which is impossible when the ship is in its flight configuration. Savrals responded, Soft death and destroyed should indeed unlock the components automatically. So if your ship's in that state, they will automatically unlock. We are aware of an issue with the destroyed state, but soft death should already work. Be aware, though, that a ship spawned through the salvage claim missions aren't in soft death states and therefore require you to enter and unlock those items manually. I think that's an interesting one um, because soft death's not going to be a thing in the future. It's a temporary thing because you will be able to, in a lot of situations, fully repair a ship that's effectively in a soft death state uh, in the future. So sort of bear that in mind. They want you to be able to salvage ships, strip them clean, or potentially repair them if you can, if they're in a state to be repaired, which a lot of ships will be if you bring the right components and tools. But you might not be able to fly unregistered ships that you've repaired in UE space without registering them first and things like that. There might be lots of stuff going on. So just bear that in mind that none of these sort of um, plans are made in stone yet. Um, so... Another question or statement. Uh, tractor beams are currently disabled in Armistice Zones. This makes it a lot harder to test out some of these features and makes them very long-winded to test. As you've got to get your ship out of the Armistice Zone first and then uh, you aren't able to just move these items around in your hangar, which would be so much easier. Clan Imperium responded, sadly, we'll have to stick with that flow for this release. Yes, we are aware that this flow is indeed not optimal or even sometimes torturous. We still have to wait for the freight elevators to make their way to allow you to have a direct interaction with your inventories and the physical spaces like your cargo hold. So good news, we plan to do it. Bad news, not for Alpha 3.19. Uh, the RSI launcher also had an update um, to 1.6.6. This is a hotfix to correct some issues with acknowledge modal and uh, detect Linux users. And lastly, we had some new subscriber promotions. So there is some new flair for um, players that are the voluntary RSI subscribers. Basically, this time, it's some backpacks. So they each have a capacity of 40 uh, M SCU. So 0.4 SCU, basically. They are Clark Defense Systems CSP68L backpacks. 
Centurion subs get a Knight Camo one, Imperators get both the Knight Camo and a Cayman one, and there's also a Forest Camo one uh, that you can get from the sub store. The ship of the month for RSI subscribers is the Argo Mole, and it's on sale as well. If you do want to grab those items, you can subscribe to the RSI subscriber stuff uh, before the 9th of May, and then they'll make them available to you. Um, and if you don't, but you want to subscribe later, then you can buy all that sort of stuff in the subscriber store anyway. It's worth noting as well that all of this sort of loot will eventually be available in-game as well. They might be pretty rare, but you will be able to find it in-game either on bodies or in boxes and like little loot piles and things. Boom! That's it for your update today. I'm very much looking forward to the roadmap update, although really it's the monthly reports that excite me that I'm going to be looking at later tonight. And I'll be giving you a summary of ASAP. I'm really interested to know, is that sort of um, subflare interest to you? Backpacks, these were a bit meh for me, but I suspect some people were like, oh yeah, cool, I like a little bit of a backpack. I don't want these items to be broken or give me like a huge advantage because otherwise everyone would need to subscribe and it would be pay to win in that aspect. Are you excited for Alpha 3.19? Are you playing in the first wave PTU? Are you waiting for it to go to open um, sort of PTU or for it to go uh, live? And are you looking forward to Fleet Week, which is expected to start around the 19th of May? And we should be having Alpha 3.19 before then. Have you been testing out the attach, detach sort of salvage feature? And have you been making money with that? Do you like it? Has it been super buggy? Whatever your experience is with all that, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day, but give him a NordVPN subscription using nordvpn.com slash boardgamer or the links below, and he'll browse the internet more safely and with greater accessibility for a lifetime or at least until his subscription ends. He can then shop for his own fish from places like Tesco's, Walmart, or Asda or something. It also makes a fantastic gift. Next time you go to a dinner party or a wedding, bring them a NordVPN subscription. Bam! You'll be the talk of the town, and it's certainly better than bringing a fish. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you'd like to go further to support the channel, then use that join button under my videos or the Patreon links below. That would be amazing. It goes a long way to helping Zin and I be able to create daily videos. And you'll get some exclusive perks, including some videos, posts, and polls to help guide the channel. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For May, it's for an Origin 400i, the luxury exploration touring ship capable of taking three crew to distant stars. It also comes with lifetime insurance and a Star Citizen game package. To be in for a chance of winning that, just comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details down below. Thanks very much for watching. I hope to see you in the verse.